Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. We're at the Open Compute Project Summit, OCP Summit. It's our fourth year being here. It's the biggest year they've ever had. And there's a lot of talk about cloud. There's the Google uh, Next event is happening in the city. But at the end of the day, the cloud does have hardware. And that's really what OCP is all about. Facebook open source their own internal hardware uh, designed years ago. And now you've got this huge vibrant ecosystem of people that are building and specking hardware to build to that spec. So we're excited to have one of the biggest names in, uh, in the cloud, smartest guy in the room, Chris Wright. He's the VP, Chief Technologist of Red Hat. Chris, great to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for having me on. So what a week this week. So Gartner's has got their, their uh, conference talking about their view of the future. IDC's talking about their view of the future. SAP comes on stage this morning with Diane Green at Google and right. says we're putting SAP on Google Cloud Platform. Yep. So cloud is clearly real. A lot of stuff going on developers. What's your take? Because you've kind of watched this whole transformation over the last several years. Well, there's no doubt that cloud is real. It's really helping people differentiate where they care about, you know, building uh, differentiated value for their business. So distinguishing where that lives from a developer point of view versus what it takes to build and operate the infrastructure. And, you know, we see automation being really core, uh, a core principle at the infrastructure layer, standardization at that layer so that you can build to kind of economies of scale and really focus on the developer and getting the developer to do the work that's building value for the business. And we're seeing that play out in, in all these different layers, all the way down at the hardware layer up through these abstracted cloud layers. So it's really fun, fun yeah, week. Because this is a lot of hardware. There's a lot of iron people that are here, right? That's Microprocessors right. and boards and even power supplies and and networking, so you know there there is a computer in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. So it's not necessarily even, one even that in you a want serverless uh, environment. Even in a serverless environment, <laughs> exactly. So, um, the developer, everybody wants the developer. Everyone wants to build an ecosystem. It's a really different world than when you kind of went at it, but at your own, and you just relied on the guys inside of your four walls. Really vibrant ecosystem here, and it seems to be growing. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that we're seeing is the developer is. In, increasingly in charge of what used to look like IT decisions. So you used to have an, a procurement process, you know, you, you, you get the blessed tool and everybody uses that. And I was just joking about this the other day and thinking there, there was a time when uh, you know, the IT group would say, here's our source code revision, uh, revision control system and here's the army of admins that come with it. And today with things like Git and distributed uh, CVS or revision control systems, that kind of goes away and maybe it's even controlled externally as software as a service and the developer can just focus on writing code and pushing out code into production on these platforms as rapidly as possible, trying to capture value for, for the business that they're right. part of. The other huge piece of it, besides cloud, as you just mentioned, is the open source. And nobody knows open source, obviously, like Red Hat. And, it's, and we hear time and time again, even Mark Hurd, we interviewed him at Oracle, talked about the incredible pace of innovation that is enabled by an open source uh, ethos. A huge piece of what's going on. You yeah. guys seem to have mastered it. Not everybody's really mastered the open source. Why is Red Hat doing such a great job and, and what is it kind of from an ethos that lets you guys be so successful managing in an open source world? Well, a, a big part of it is it's core culturally to who we are. Uh, we are a company built from, you know, we're, we're delivering enterprise products, uh, but we're building that using an open source development model and we really focus on engaging with the community, being a part of the community, being leaders in that community, being influential in that community on behalf of our customers. And it's that level of engineering rigor that's really required to be successful in any open source project and taking that project into production so that you're not sort of stuck at the whims of the upstream, but you're really there helping influence where the upstream goes. And I think right. one of the things that's really exciting to me about OCP is you're seeing that similar collaboration model you get a diverse set of people bringing different use cases and different skills and experiences, working together, solving a problem, and now we're, seeing, you know, we're solving that at the hardware layer. Right. And what's important there, I think, is the users have an avenue for getting engaged. And it, you see this in open source software, users are part of the, the communities. Here, it's not just vendors designing new, uh, new uh, systems and, and delivering those to their customers hoping they're meeting something useful, making right. something useful for their customers, we're working together, users, designers, uh, and, and the, you know, the whole supply chain. I think it's really a powerful way to do technology innovation. And really just the whole co-opetition 
thing, which is such an interesting, very Silicon Valley way, because the reality is there is no just a customer, there is no Boeing, right? right. There's a lot of Boeing projects and a lot yeah. of Boeing customers and a lot of Boeing needs that can be supplied by a whole host of people. And also, the rate at which all this stuff is changing, no single vendor can stay at the cutting right. edge. It's, re it's really not even realistic, and, and you shouldn't, because there's a lot of people outside of your four walls that can and will make tremendous contributions to what you're working on. Yeah, I mean, we're working together with our competitors and with our partners, building software that we know satisfies our customer needs. We also know that we're helping our partners and, and competitors succeed, that you know, it's sort of the, the rising tide raises all boats. We're, tr we're trying to really improve the industry, move it forward, and let everybody benefit from that. Right, so if we come back a year from now, what do you see as kind of some of the big accomplishments looking forward to 2017 that, uh, that need to still be kind of taken down or significant progress made? Well, it depends on which layer of the stack you're talking. <laughs> I think one of the things we'll see here, OCP, is uh, that we, we've gone past that initial stage of a few design specifications, a uh, small number of ODMs providing hardware, and, and it's really, you can see here on the on the showroom floor, there's a lot of activity, a lot of real production quality hardware. Right. So that helps it move out of just kind of a an awesome idea, a technology dream into a practical reality and things going into production, and it helps companies like us uh, find ways to get involved because our customers are now interested in, in putting that hardware into their data centers. So I think we'll see you know, more and more increase of it's not science projects, it's real, honest production work. Right. Production, production, production. All right, well, Chris, I know you got to go. You got a session That's later right. this afternoon. I wrote down scale out software solutions, so I'll let you get going. Thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your yeah, busy day. Thank you. All right, he's Chris Wright. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. See you next time. Thanks for watching.